time, Massachusetts, Emory, is seeing a surge in pediatric admissions. Boston Children's Hospital has been admitting several patients per day. According to news outlets in the area, there are currently 11 children at the health center sick with the virus, including three in the intensive care unit. So for more on how this pandemic is affecting children, we're joined by Dr. Diane Hess. Uh, doctor, I guess the first question I have is, what are you seeing in the data, in the numbers, um, as far as children being admitted to uh, hospitals because of this pandemic? What, what does that tell you? What does the data tell you? Why are we seeing this? It's actually very, very small. You have to remember that Boston Children's Hospital is a center of excellence where the sickest children from all around the world come to get treated. So actually, oftentimes, their families even move to Boston for those children to get treated. So I have read the literature, and those children, um, the majority of them are already immunocompromised in some way. They either have a congenital defect, a heart defect, they're being treated for cancer, and they're actually doing quite well, but they uh, they are ending up there because that is the best place for them to be right now, because that's where they get taken care of for their tertiary, higher level med medical problems. Well, that's good to know because, you know, numbers need context and, and that helps out a lot. Um, still, you know, parents have questions about just how to protect sure. their kids. We're all wearing masks now. I had a neighbor who came by who gave me a bunch of child-sized masks. There's a lot of that kind of happening here. I got something for you. And you really don't know where these masks come from. Um, I'm wondering, should children be wearing masks? So children above the age of two can wear masks. We, we try to get them to wear masks. It's very hard because sometimes it, it bounces back at you because they keep on touching their face because they, they can't stand the feeling of the mask on there. And if you've worn your mask, you know that you get a runny nose with it and it's allergy season. But um, we really ask the parents to put something on the children because they're the source of the infection. So when they cough or you know just rub their nose and touch the monkey bars or touch a door handle, they are shedding the virus and that that's why we want children to be wearing masks. It's not because as much as we're worried about them getting sick, it's, it's, much, it's more because we're worrying about them shedding it. And I can tell you that yesterday I got in a long, for the past month, I really haven't had any patients with fever. And yesterday I got two calls, telemedicine, about patients with fever, and they've both been going out. They haven't really been, one of them definitely has been going out to the playground, which is supposed to be closed uh, twice a day. And I think she has COVID. Um, and the second one um, actually moved in with their grandparents despite the warnings that we say don't go to your grandparents even if you've been isolated for 14 days because these kids are carriers and now he developed the fever and they're with the, the immunocompromised grandparents it's really insidious and the kids are shedding it they might be carrying it so they might not even have symptoms for two weeks we don't know enough they might be carrying it for a month or two until they get sick so you really need to follow the shelter in place and social distancing so, doctor, I mean, you know, I know you live in New York City. I live in New York City. Uh, you know, the only time I ever step out of my apartment is to go for a run um, in the early mornings or in the late uh, evenings at, in Central Park. But sometimes when I have been out in the middle of the day for a run, I have seen parents with children in the park. Uh, so two questions. Um, sh you, you know, I know that kids can't stay indoors every day for weeks mm -hmm. on end in an apartment. But if you want to take your child out, um, what should you be thinking about if you're doing that? And, and I guess the second follow-up question is, how should you talk to your child about the coronavirus pandemic if they are stuck in the house? You know, we've seen sometimes those cute memes where the kids are, you know, sort of throwing a temper tantrum because they want to go outside. And it's kind of cute, but, you know, there's a real concern as to why they can't go outside. So how should you talk to your kids about that? Well, you have to talk to them about germs and they don't really understand so much what germs are but you have to say we can go outside for fresh air but i know you want to play with your friends that we can't do that anymore but we want to get you exercise that's why i try to encourage like individual activities like hula hoop jump rope riding a scooter riding a bike because those things your child can do alone and not really um feel like they're missing out but um what's happening i think also because they've closed all the city parks i mean i'm talking from new york city perspective and i'm sure in other cities they have is that the only grassy areas get get very crowded very quickly because we have so little space in New York City to congregate that if you want to go to run on the river, you're surrounded by people. And then if you want to ride their bike, they have really they don't really have that free space to ride like they do if you live in the suburbs. But I'm um, trying to think of individual activities like let's do I any mean, sidewalk chalk has become super popular. You know, artwork outside, play doh outside. 
things, things that you can get them out of the house for, but um, they can do individually. Yeah, I think that's great advice. I have an only child here at home with me, um, and we have been doing a lot of that sort of individual stuff. And we're doing a lot of sort of Zoom activities. We did sort of a Zoom scavenger hunt with her classmates. Oh. Um, but it's tough for only kids. Uh, mm -hmm. And I am running out of ideas. Uh, we went walking. We tried to go walking every single day. Doctor, I should ask you about this because over the weekend we walked. I live in Pennsylvania, so we walked across mm -hmm. the Ben Franklin Bridge. There are people out there. We all had masks on. We tried to maintain, you know, the six feet distance. But I posted pictures on social media and I got a bit of finger wagging about why was I out and, you know, was this the right thing to do? And I said, look, I have an only child and I try to, we try to have exercise every day or else she'll be, you know, on a device the whole time um right. and i and even i was second guessing whether or not that was a choice that was a good choice for the health of my family so i'll ask you you know i do the same thing we we go for walks we take our dogs out i mean our dogs have to walk four times a day so we wear a mask and i think as long as you're social distance it's fine you know i ran into a friend actually walking on the west side highway on the river and i was like hey and then he got close and my other my other colleague and I, we were walking, you know, six feet apart and, and we're like, we'll talk on the phone later. Like, we don't want to, like, I don't even want to walk with three people because I feel like when the sidewalk gets narrow, you get too close to each other. But, you know, we have to weigh the pros and cons and for children to stay indoors all day and, it, you know, on the devices because parents have to work. You're working from home. I'm working from home. I mean, some days I do go into the office, but um, it, it's very hard not to just turn to the iPad and say, do this because mommy has to work or daddy has to work. Um, I think as long as they're wearing a mask, I don't think you need gloves unless you're going to be touching things, unless you're going to the supermarket. And, and I think that if you go outside with their bike, with a scooter, taking a walk, minding social distancing, I think you're okay. And I think mental health is so important right now because I, I can tell you that my patients are really lonely and really sad. I mean, and, and we live, some people live in a one, one room apartment in New York City. It's hard and it's crowded. And you know, even just setting up the camera here, I'm in a loft, so my kids are all banned into their bedroom on, you know, on online schooling right now. I'm like, don't come near me because I'm on TV. But like, you, you really start to feel that like cabin fever. You know, we don't have a basement yeah, to go a, play in. Yeah, it's a good or, point or that you. Anything. Yeah, no, doctor, it's a great point, and uh, Emery, to your point too. I mean, um, it's it's hard to think now where we are today, where we will be in six months or a year with regards to mental health, especially for children um, who are only child, like uh, Amory, your daughter. And, and you know, I, I wonder about the mental health of young people, um, you know, in the months uh, ahead. Uh, I mean, that's gonna be, that's just something else that I think the medical community is going to have to grapple with, right, doctor? Uh, in six months yeah. or a year, you know, you may see children that have uh, issues, behavioral issues. I just sort of wonder about kids who are at that period in their lives where they are just starting to interact with other children at school, and all of a sudden now they've been yanked out of that, and then to reintroduce them into uh, that situation at a later time, I guess, could be problematic. I know children are, are resilient, and yes, as Anne-Marie likes to point out, I am the, the one uncle who says, I don't have children, but here's what I think. So I, I preface that before people start adding me on Twitter. That's okay. <laughs> um, so what I, what I always, uh, what, I, what I've been seeing, I can tell you, I got a phone call yesterday of a mom who, she knew the answer, but she just needed to talk to somebody. She said, my daughter's three and a half years old. She's been potty trained for over a year and she's had accidents six times in a row since the last two days. You know, this is kind of the way children show anxiety. They, you know, in school, you're in a group, you stand up online to go to the potty. It's like potty time. It's a social thing for kids. And then all of a sudden you're stuck at home with your mom on a couch, you're watching TV while your mom is working and nobody's prompting you to go to the bathroom again. So, you know, the mom's like, I know, I know it, it's not her fault. And she's actually like a little bit embarrassed about it when she does it, but I don't know what to do. So we discussed, um, sorry, my camera's falling. We discussed uh, like a star chart, let's hang a star, like let's hang a calendar on the refrigerator and every day she goes pee pee in the potty, we put a star and if she gets three stars, she gets the prize. So these are like little regressions, but I also feel that some of my patients who, cause we're still doing well visits, are having some speech delay. Like the kids who aren't great speakers, when they go to daycare or school, it forces them to use their word and to communicate with other kids and their teachers. Interesting. Where, you know, whereas when you're home and your parents kind of understand your cues, 
and your meltdowns, and they know how to um, prevent that meltdown if you're frustrated because you can't get the word out, they, they automatically hand you the bottle of milk or they automatically give you a snack. Um, so I feel that those kids who are a little bit delayed in speech are going to be more delayed in speech because lack of socialization. Man, all that stuff is so interesting, uh, Dr. Hess. Uh, we could talk to you for, you know, an hour and a half. It's really fascinating stuff. And I think it's really good of you to point out that children take out their anxiety and their frustrations and their fear in ways that are different than adults. They don't have the language to say, I'm feeling a little anxious or stressed right. out, other than my daughter, who seems to be able to say that to me all the time. Um, and so you have to look for these sort of little cues in them. Um, but hopefully we'll get a chance to talk to you again. Uh, doctor, thank you so much. Thank you.